Tally Ho, it's Kingfish Ocean, also known as Hits Ocean, playing more Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, and we're doing more side stories. How's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful freaking day, by the way. I always somehow forget to say that. I say that on streams, but I always forget to say that in videos for some reason. <laughs> anyway, um, last episode we beat the, we uh, checked out the Respect episode, and it felt like a goodbye to the game, which was really weird, which makes me wonder if Balance, Reflection, and Self Love are going to be more, like, mini stories, and they're not going to, like, set anything up, like, they're not going to be the prequel, they're just going to be, like, little extra story arcs, I guess. But I guess we'll find out. So let's get straight into this. Yeah, cool. Natsuki! Well, Natsuki is missing with the orientation of her manga in the closet shots. Siori approaches from behind and pulls her into an embrace. What? What the hell do you want? Uh, hi. Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, hi. The Little Literature Club has been in full swing since Natsuki joined. Including her, the club is now compromi uh, compromised. The club is now compromised. Get everybody out of here. Go, go. It's now comprised of four members, Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica, also known as S-N-Y-M. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all of their favorite kinds of literature with each other. Natsuki was first and shared her passion in manga. Then Sayori shared her love for poetry, as well as how she got, in, uh, got about writing, goes about writing it herself. Monica, who has multiple literary interests, decided to focus her day on short stories. And finally, Yuri managed to demonstrate her obsession with fantasy, with a little help and encouragement from Sayori. After the week was spent on their presentations, Monica decided to give the club members this next week to freely explore each other's literary interests. I almost read that as just to freely explore each other, and I was like, and, and thus, on this day, Monica became hardy. Sayori, having spent- the music just did the thing- the loop thing again. Sayori, having spent most of her time in the club so far of Yuri's fantasy books, is rather excited to begin her journey into Natsuki's manga collection. I want to read with you today. Tell me which one I should pick. Uh, well, I guess that depends on what kind of stuff you like. I mean, there's like romance, drama, comedy, mystery, and if you like Cats and Levi, you can always re-attack on Titan. I like all of those things. Sayori reaches out and pulls a random book from the shelf and inspects the cover. Shouldn't this girl be wearing more, more clothes? Oh, she's found the hentai section. Y you wouldn't like that one! Okay, maybe I am actually right. I, I was joking, but okay. In a panic, Natsuki snatches the book from Sayori's hand and replace, um, uh, replaces it on the shelf in a less conspicuous location. Okay, well, uh, if you really have no preference, then let's just start with something that's easy to get into. A lot of these don't start to get really good until, like, a few volumes in. I wouldn't ask someone to make that kind of commitment unless they're already really into manga. I could handle it. I did with Yuri's book, at least. Well, I'm more considerate than that. Rude. Although, I'm kind of impressed by your attention span if you put that much effort into her books. No, I have the attention span of a donut. At least she's honest. But I love my friends and I can do anything if, if it's for them. Well, okay then. Let's pick you something that even donuts can read. I didn't say it was a donut, I just said I had the attention span of one. Ah, were you just trying to call me sweet? You're so cute! No, I. How did you get to that conclusion, you baka champ? Baka. Baka champ? Uh, don't call me that. What, a donut? C cute. Ah, uh, how come? I just don't like it. I don't need a reason, okay? Natsuki eggs a book from the shelf and closes the closet doors. Someone asks you to stop, then you just need to stop. People need to realize that. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings or anything. Nah, uh, sorry. It's okay, it wasn't you. Natsuki shakes her head while pulling a second chair over to her desk. I was talking about something else. I didn't mean to get angry all of a sudden. Natsuki averts her gaze and mumbles. You're like, well, like a nice person, so I, I, I wasn't talking about you. I still learned a valuable lesson. That I like donuts. Sayori speaks softly as well, feeling shy after receiving the unexpected compliment. Well, anyway, Baka-chan, here's the book, so just start it whenever you feel like it. What's it about? Well, it's like a comedy, and there's romance too, obviously. Sounds like my kind of thing, to be honest. It sounds like some slice of life shit, and that's the good stuff for me right though. Sayori looks at the title. It's called Love is Another Word for Luck. Also known as L-I-A-W-F-L. -L. It's about a girl who keeps accidentally running into the same guys, and then you find out, like, well, uh, you should just read it. But you have to tell me what you think. 
I can already guess who you're gonna ship yourself with. It'd be so funny if I'm right. Ship? I... I don't get it. Uh, never mind. Let's not worry about that yet. Just... Just make sure you tell me what you think. Uh, okay. I'll start then. Uh, hey, maybe tomorrow we can do poetry too. Oh, uh... Yeah, I guess. But don't you want to finish this first? Yeah, but we could do both. I mean, unless you don't like poetry, then I won't make here or anything. Oh, no, it's just... Well, never mind. We can worry about it tomorrow. She really, really wants to know her opinion, like, so soon. After the club meeting ends and Natsuki and Yuri leave, Monica strikes up a conversation with Sayori, and I really love the new, so the new songs in this soundtrack. Mwah, they are beautiful. I see you got Natsuki to share some of her manga with you. I really want to become better friends with her. She's so enthusiastic and expressive. I could just listen to her talk. She's so uh, actually, I'm not sure if I if she meant I can can't say that to her. If I just can't say it at all, uh, say what? Nothing. I am a woman of respect. <laughs> Best girl, Sayori. But Natsuki is a woman of cute. I, I, w I don't know if I'd call her a woman per se. She looks like she's like fucking twelve. I know that apparently she's actually meant to be this, I think she's meant to be the same age as these characters who are apparently over the age of 18. But like, I don't know. I don't buy it. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I said it. Oh, heck. <laughs> What's so bad about that? I don't know. But you know, there's one thing I'm kind of worried about. Sometimes I'm afraid that Natsuki actually doesn't like me very much. Oh, that's ridiculous. How come you feel that way? Well, I mean... Just little signs, like how she only says hi to me after I say hi to her first. And it feels like she only gets excited to talk to me when it's about manga and other stuff she likes. She just seems dismissive a lot. She was like that when I brought up poetry. That's just not skiing a nutshell to be fair. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't like you. She's probably just shy, you know? Maybe. <laughs> My stupid head is just making me worry for no reason. It likes to do that. It's okay. Try not to worry so much. Everything will be great. But you can always talk to me about any concerns you have. I'm here to help. You're the best. Sayori gives Monica a quick hug. Well, I'm gonna keep trying because I love her and I want to get closer to her. You got this. I love this version of Dorky. This version of Dorky is so wholesome, it's so sweet, and it's so cute and lovely, and I want more of this. After the next club meeting starts, Ocean has a hair in his ear that is tickling it, and it is bothering him. <coughs> Sayori is the last one in as usual. Trotting into the room, she sees Natsuki sitting alone by the closet, reading what must be manga. Without hesitation, Sayori pulls up a chair and plops herself down right next to Natsuki. Hello there! Hi. What you reading? Can I read it with you? Natsuki pulls the book away from Sayori. You can't just start in the middle, there are spoilers. Besides, what about the one I gave you yesterday? Oh, sorry, I was just curious. Well, anyway, I've been waiting forever for this volume to come out, and it just came out yesterday, so... Oh, that's exciting. Well, uh, I'll let you read it then. Mm-hmm. Can I sit next to you, though? Uh, sure. Siori plops herself down next to Natsuki, Natsuki and pulls out a blank sheet of paper. Natsuki reads in silence, save the periodic flutter of a page being released from beneath her thumb. From Siori's side, only the light tapping noises of her pen meeting the paper can be heard. Is she making notes on the manga as well? Time passes. Sayori's paper is filled with scribbles, and the margins are lined with stick figures. Natsuki lets out a deep sigh and closes her book. Did you finish? No, but it's a good stopping point. My head is swimming, I need a break. Natsuki stretches her arms. Aren't you bored? No, I was writing. Oh, I saw the stick figures and I thought you were just bored or something. I just draw those when I'm thinking or waiting for inspiration. I made friends with them all. This one is sad because she thinks the night sky is pretty, but she can't look up at the stars in public without everyone thinking she's a weirdo. And this one has problems with his back, but the doctors can't figure out what's wrong with him. <laughs> what the heck? You're the weirdo. Wanna read the poem I'm working on? Sure, I guess. Sierra slides the paper over to Natsuki. Are we gonna read this? As Natsuki reads through the poem, she furrows her eyebrows. Hmm. She slides the paper back to Sayori. Don't you ever feel weird just sharing all your thoughts and feelings like that? I mean, your poems are like, super emotional. Is that bad? Well, no, it was just an observation. I think people can get closer to each other if they find ways of expressing their feelings. Well, 
Natsuki begins to protest, but she can't find a good way of putting her thoughts into words. Doesn't that depend more on the kind of friends you have? I don't know. I might have, uh, read the wrong article, I'm not sure. It's each their own, but I've never met anyone I'd feel comfortable sharing my poems with. Not that it's you, it's just how I am, so... You write poems! Uh... You never told me that! I just thought you wrote other stuff! Yeah, that too, but, uh... You should... I mean, would you ever want to share? Like I said, I don't really do that. But... Can we talk about something else, please? I'm, I'm sorry. It's not your fault, it just makes me uncomfortable, I can't help it. Still, I'm sorry anyway. It's fine. Well, let's move on to something that makes us both happy. I should continue the book you gave me since I didn't get very far yet. Sure. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Over the next few days, Sayori begins each club meeting by approaching Natsuki with unwavering enthusiasm. It's Natsuki! Natsuki! <laughs> it's Natsuki! <laughs> the end of one club meeting, Monica, who has become rather invested in Sayori's friendship mission, starts an innocuous conversation with Natsuki while she packs up. It's cool that you've been finding time to spend with Sayori. She's pretty excited for the chance to read manga with you. Yeah. I'm sure you've been enjoying the chance to share it too, right? <clears throat> yeah, mostly. Hmm? Natsuki glances over her shoulder but doesn't reply further. What's on your mind? Uh, nothing. I, I don't talk about people behind their backs. Oh. Natsuki falls silent, but she just fidgets instead of getting back to what she was doing as though she wants to say more. It's okay to want to share your feelings. That's different from talking about someone behind their back. I guess. I just hate when people talk about me behind my back, so I'm better than to do it to, uh, better than that to do it to others. Monica shares a bright smile. You're really considerate. Um, thanks I guess, but it doesn't feel like it. You can trust me. Natsuki stands in silence for a moment, still fidgeting. I just feel smothered sometimes. I'm not used to someone being like all over me right after we meet. I mean, it's fun to hang out with her, but I just have no control over the pace. I can't just meet someone and instantly become best friends with them and like share everything about myself. That's not how it works. I just want to chill out sometimes. Oh, I didn't realize that was happening. It's fine. Why would you have? I know, I just feel bad about it. I know Sayori, so I should have realized. Monica navigates through her tinge of guilt, which has surfaced mainly due to her being the one who previously encouraged Sayori's behavior. Despite not knowing the situation, Monica can't help but feel a little bit responsible. Do you want me to talk to her about it? No, I, I wouldn't like that. Well, I could, I don't know, like, I could divert her into another club activity for you or something? No way, that'd be so underhanded and mean. Sorry, I didn't think that one through. Besides, just because I complained about it doesn't mean that I'm asking for someone to solve my problems for me. True. I, I'm sorry. I guess I just instinctively want to try and solve people's problems even if I haven't been invited to. It's fine. I would talk to Sayori about it, but it would just make things really weird between us. I feel like it would just make her just constantly be afraid that she's bothering me. I don't know how to keep things natural. Well... I think if you do a good job expressing all your feelings, she would totally understand. Sayori really just wants to be the best that she can be for other people. I think she would actually be super happy that you want to improve your friendship with her. Maybe. Ugh. It just feels so dumb talking to someone about how to be friends with them. It's just weird and not cool. Monica shrugs. It's the literature club. Then she mumbles for a stifled laugh. It's not the cool club. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, that just tickled me for some reason. Look, I know that you're kind of in a tough spot, that it's hard for you to really express yourself. But you've really demonstrated to me that you're great at self-reflection and critical thinking, even if it doesn't feel like it for you. I think that's the most important part of being able to navigate through these things. So I believe that you'll find the right thing to do. Well, Natsuki instinctively starts to reject the compliment, but you can't find any excuse to do so. Thanks. Natsuki gathers her things, then she finishes her thought in a mumble. I'm still glad I joined the club, even if it is weird sometimes. Monica smiles. But Natsuki turns her back and walks away before waiting for a reply. It was an unusual way for Natsuki to express her appreciation. Monica knew what she meant. It made Monica feel like everything really was going to be okay. Nice. 
I was gonna, I was gonna say that's probably the, uh, the end of part, uh, part one. Did I get another song? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, I think that's new. I'm not sure though. Uh, it seems like all we got though. So let's move straight on to part two. Hells yeah, mother fricker. Mother Doki, uh, what? It's lunchtime. Sayoriu usually buys her lunch. She's making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowned by Sayori's impeccable skill of zoning out. However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl. Hey! That's Natsuki! I never run into her and other- uh, into, uh, into the other club members around the school! Natsuki! Sarah stands on her tiptoes and waves. Natsuki is busy walking and chatting with her friends, doesn't notice Sayori at first. Then she glances over in Sayori's direction. Sayori waves enthusiastically. Uh. Following her friends, Natsuki quickly ducks around the corner. Uh, hey, she definitely saw me. Huh. Natsuki's doing that thing where she uh is kind of nervous about her friends knowing about like her literature club stuff, I guess, and about um, the friends that she's met in the literature club, I suppose. Monica is the first to arrive to the club meeting, then Natsuki. I don't like that it's gone silent because it makes me think something horror-related is going to happen, even though it probably won't. Sayori, having glanced through the window to see Natsuki already inside, is unable to work up enough courage to enter. And then it turns out that Natsuki and her friends are Satanists and they're doing satanic rituals. And they're sacrificing one of the other classmates. Plot twist. Natsuki's been so distant with me. I was stupid to think she ever wanted to be friends. She only ever got excited because she got to share her manga. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Um, oh hi Yuri. Sorry, but do you plan on going inside? No. <laughs> uh, why? I'm... I'm soaking. <laughs> Sayori, cutest and best girl. She is best. Uh, oh, um, well, I'm sorry for bothering you, excuse me. <clears throat> no, don't leave me! Oh, I I'll stay here then. I don't want to go in, I'm just afraid of bothering Natsuki. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her, but instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Oh, really? Hmm. Not bad. Hey! Uh, so sorry! Sorry that that was that was a joke. It just sounded like something stupid I would do from anxiety. Uh... From anxiety? Well, I just don't like attention being drawn to myself. Oh. Well, that makes sense based on the, pa on the person you are. But Natsuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends. It feels like every day she just tried to distance herself from me more and more instead of getting closer. It makes me feel like she only ever wants to spend time with me during the club because I was reading manga. But she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um, well I feel like I'm missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? No, she was just walking with her friends. With her friends? Yuri pauses for a moment. How do I put this? Sayori, you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to keep spending time with them? Of course! I don't think there's anything more important to me. I mean, the best parts of my day are always my friends. Besides that, I really hate being alone, so... Mood. You hate being alone? Sorry, nods. We are very different people. <laughs> I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I think... Well, if I was trying to have alone time and it was being threatened with an interruption, then... It would not make me very happy. Oh well, yeah, but that doesn't have to do with Natsuki. She was already with her friends, not trying to be alone or anything. No, I think it's kind of similar. Well, we're all friends in the club, but we have our own lives outside of the club as well. If you think about it, making new friends is some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to intertwine your lives together. The capacity at which each person is ready to do that might be different. There are friends who just like to have fun together and others who talk every day and share every detail of their lives with each other. I think when establishing a friendship, it's important to consider the comfort level of the other person. I mean, we don't really know how much- uh, we don't really know much about Natsuki's life outside of the club. It could just be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace, rather than jump headfirst into a new commitment. But, 
That means I was really bothering her. I just really wanted to be good friends with her, so I treated her like one. Was I actually hurting her? I... I don't know, I'm sorry. My insight was really only based on what I understood about my own needs. Natsuki and I are completely different, so... Why was I so selfish? Even after all that is true, that it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up, Yuri. Yuri, with you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all with Natsuki because she already seemed really social. I just took control of everything instead of looking for the right balance. And now I've hurt her and she doesn't want to talk to me. How can I let myself do this? Um, Sayori, I think that... Well, there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality. It's easy to automatically jump to the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Natsuki doesn't harbor any Ill, Ill feelings towards you. So I think if we were to realistically consider the situation and how it would cause someone to feel, um... I'm, I'm bad at this, I'm, I'm sorry. You're a lot better than me at things like comforting and reassuring people. Suddenly, Sayori gives Yuri a gentle hug. Uh, you're the best, Yuri! I'm sorry for burdening you with this. You're trying so hard for me, and you're such a sweetheart. I just, uh, it's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others. Um, and my friends deserve happiness. Sayori beams. Well, I think I'm gonna give Natsuki some space for a little while. She should do what she wants. And if she does still want to be friends, then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's what's best. I wish I didn't feel so awful and guilty, though. It makes me feel desperate, like I need to make it up to her by trying to make her happy. That's not what she needs. I just have to tell myself that. It hurts, but I guess it means that I still need to grow. I really want to grow as a person. If it's to be better for my friends, I want that. That's very mature of you, Sayori. <laughs> I'm mature. Like a cheese. Sayori hops up and down on her toes. So does that mean you'll be going home after all? Sayori shakes her head. I need to be here to show her that I respect her space. I had to spend the club by my uh, spend the time in the club by myself today. Yuri nods in understanding. You can go in first. Okay. Um, you're blocking the door. Oh. Uh, Sayori steps aside. Heh. <laughs> by the way, for enter uh, Yuri enters the room. Sayori interjects. You said that you and Natsuki are completely different, but I don't really think that's true. I think you're actually really similar in a lot of ways. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Sayori, that's absurd. You're very silly sometimes. Yuri turns and enters the club room. After a moment, Sayori follows. The club room is quiet. When Sayori walks in, Natsuki glances in her direction. Yuri, uh, Sayori smiles and gives Natsuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in her bosom. Sayori decides it's best to continue the manga that she was reading, so she pulls it out. However, it looks like Natsuki isn't reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. I bet she's writing poetry. Ooh, are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet voice, and willing to disturb the peace of the club room. She kneels down at Natsuki's desk. Uh, hey! Natsuki pulls the sheet closer to her and covers it with her arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to peek. Wh whatever I just wanted to see how everything was going. It's fine. Natsuki replies dismissively. She glances over at Sayori, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Natsuki's gaze. I think she's mad at me. How come? I'm... I'm busy right now. Just, uh, ask me later. Monica fa falls silent. Natsuki looks back down on her paper. She inserts her hand away from the top margin, allowing Monica to see. It says, to Sayori. Aww. Understanding, Monica smiles. She places a hand on Natsuki's shoulder and whispers softly, Hail Hydra. I'm proud of you. Uh. Natsuki looks away, but makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. Monica gives Natsuki's shoulder a, qu a quick squeeze before standing back up and pulling away. Da, 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 da. The end of the club meeting passes. Yuri has already departed. So was Monica, after checking on Sayori and Natsuki to ensure they wouldn't stay too late. Sayori was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out, since the end was approaching. However, with Natsuki also staying uh, late for an unknown reason, a silent tension hangs in the air. After finishing the volume, Sayori brings it to the closet to put it away. She slides it back onto the shelf while Natsuki watches. Then Natsuki gets up and pulls it back out in order to return it to its proper location. Hehe, <laughs> sorry. I didn't know where it's supposed to go. It's fine. The two fall silent again, avoiding eye contact. 
They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. A moment passes. Well, uh, I'll be on my way, I guess. Uh, see you tomorrow. Hmm. Sierra turns away to hide her pained expression and then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof that Natsuki no longer wanted to be friends, this was it. Defeated, Sayori carries herself out of the clubroom. Aw, poor Sayori. Once in the hallway, Sayori takes a deep breath and hits her palms against her cheeks to clear her head a little bit. Um, Sayori Natsuki's stammering voice calls from behind. Uh, Natsuki? Startled, Sayori turns back to face Natsuki. Aw. Natsuki fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. I, I have a lot of things to say. Uh, me, me too. But you go first. Natsuki bites her lip. I can't stay still. Well, first of all... She cuts herself short, struggling to continue. Try to force the words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down a little. I'm sorry for the thing I did at lunch, and I'm sorry for just being kind of mean lately. It's really hard for me to, like... I, I mean, I'm, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable. Uh, especially when it comes to, like, uh, like feelings and stuff. So, uh... uh Face burning, Natsuki clams up again. Instead of continuing, she simply holds up a sheet of paper for Sayori to take. Oh, we got to read it. The best place in the world. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colors and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures, all my books, my collections, and my memories. All my dreams were born in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets. All my failures, my fears, and my feelings. Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch, but it's still the best place in the world. Then someone knocks, and I get scared. I brace my arms against the loose hinges. Please don't break. Don't come in. I'm not ready. It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture. An eye peeks through the keyhole, and I panic. I'm trapped in my best place in the world. I'm not ready to share my favorite place. I need to clean my secrets and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them to put, a, put them away to see them again. I have so much to do and I'm scared. I'm not ready, but it's still my favorite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes if you wait patiently. I'll eventually open the door and I'll show you the best place in the world. That's actually a really, really nice poem. I really like that. I, I kind of hate that I uh, am about to say this, but I actually really like this version of Natsuki. Um, the main game version of Natsuki was kind of, seemed like kind of an asshole and was just constantly being a dick to people all the time, insulting the main character, insulting Yuri all the time, and talking shit about people. I really didn't like that version of her, but this this side story version of her is like actually quite nice. She seems a lot more nicer towards people, and I hate that I have to say that because I really don't like her in the main game. It's a poem, but I thought, well, I sucked it up so like work things out with you. So just, just be, be happy about it, I guess. Please? Sayori smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happier than I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy that you would do this for me. I actually realized before the club meeting today that I made a mistake. I got so caught up in the chance to get closer to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted. And that we probably have different ways that we like to make friends. Um, about, like, friendship stuff. I mean... It's okay. I understand. So you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your poem did a good job. So don't force yourself if you're not ready yet, okay? Natsuki nods. You don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault and I'm sorry. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually felt really guilty and just wanted to give you space. I was thinking it's silly that I just approach you all the time and that I should just let you approach me when you want to. Just... Whatever makes you comfortable, I respect that from now on. Friendship should always start with those things. With the right balance. Natsuki nods again. Uh, one thing about that. Huh? Well, I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I just want it to be balanced, like you said. Sayori nods. I understand. We'll make sure of that together, then. Cute! Cuteness! Well, anyway, Bakuchan. Now that the two of them have found common ground, Natsuki finds it easier to speak more freely again. I'm not gonna be like, sharing my poems like all the time or anything like that, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to do one once in a while. Only the best ones. So you better like them because otherwise I might change my mind. I like anything you do, Natsuki. I was, I was, I was just saying. More importantly, I have to tell you about my new boyfriend. What? 
Huh? Uh, oh, from, from the manga. Oh, okay. Wait, I need to guess who it is. You definitely will not be able to guess. The two walk down the hallway together. Oh my god, we have so much to talk about. Darn, I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. Aw, oh, you wanted to enjoy it with me. That's so cute. Oh, shush. <laughs> Is that the end of that? Aw. Oh. That was actually kind of a shorter one. Oh, we have new mail. Um, Paula Minor. Ethics. Simply put, it's not our job to arbitrarily decide upon some code of ethics just because we're the first ones to do this, to our knowledge. That's the government's job to figure out. Long after we've made enough headway for it to no longer apply to us, it's fundamentally flawed to apply ethical reasoning to this anyway, because humanity's code of ethics is based upon nothing more than our knowledge understanding of life forms similar to ourselves. We don't have ethics for killing bacteria or plants, only for the creatures that we can, uh, we can convincingly project our emotions onto. The humans in our VMs op operate completely different from us on a fundamental level, and therefore should not be taken any more seriously than a machine that's programmed to, pr uh, to print I feel sad. We're engineers, not philosophers. Okay. I still have no idea what's going on here. But it seems like they're investigating some stuff. But I don't know. We have new artwork. Hell yeah. Finish the side story. Balance 2. Nice. That's like a redo of the, um, of this artwork. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. And we have Natsuki. Oh, that's actually kind of cute. God damn it. She's like, let me just take a stuff here. Mm. But yeah, that's nice. I like how the um, the like the cats and the diamonds or whatever are lit up around her as if like the flash of the camera is lighting them up. That's really cool. Uh, so we have one more to go, and that will be Yuri because we have we have a, a Sayori, we have um, Natsuki, and we have a Monica, but we don't have a Yuri. So the Yuri will probably be the last image for that. We have um, the best place in the world. Oh. Uh, a poem from Natsuki, distributed at special events in the past. Special events? What? I named my pen the Expression Express. My feelings are bored with a ticket to you. No room for stammers, no lies, no extra stops, and no compromise. Stations screamed by, attendants saying hi. One ticket to you, please and thank you. Take a headphone and doze. No bumps in the rails, just thumps in my heart. And l loops in my letters, and clouds in the sky, and dreams in your eyes. Hey, wake up, the train has arrived. Expression Express, destination you. Choo choo. That's actually quite adorable. Natsuki, how the fuck did you go from being the worst character to one of the best? What the fuck? I'm so confused. This, this, this game is giving me fucking whiplash. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, we still don't have a lot of the promo stuff, though, so I'm wondering how we're going to get those. Maybe we unlock them from completing the rest of the side stories or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, that was... What was that called? <laughs> balance. That was Balance. Next episode, we will be doing Reflection. Um, so we have two more to go. Um, so that should be pretty cool. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Pip-pip-toodaloo!